first person this week is Wilmington City Councilwoman Hanifa Shabazz. She represents the 4th District, but is concerned about the entire city when it comes to violence and the number of shootings recorded in Wilmington in recent years. Thank you so much, Councilwoman, for stopping by. Uh, let's first start off with the violence in Wilmington. It seems to be the hot topic lately. Uh, I guess one of the reasons why you decided to push for officials from the Centers uh, for Disease and Control to come here and take a look at the violence. Uh, tell me what actually motivated you to do so. Well, you know, um, I realized that um, the epidemic proportion of gun violence that was happening in our community could not be a natural phenomenon. Um, knowing the nature of our children, I've been in Wilmington all my life, mm -hmm. that this had to be something outside of us natural, which meant that there was a health issue there, uh, a mentality. Uh, what, you know, for someone to, you know, for our young people to be so heinous and to take a gun and take someone's life, that I knew that there had to be some mental illness there. And so that that's why I pushed for the Center for Disease Control to come to the city. It, they, did, they did come to the state in Lower Delaware when there was an epidemic proportion of suicides yes, among remember. teens. Mm -hmm. So this is homicide among teens that I knew that, you know, I, I just took a stab at it and was successful. Okay, well that's a good thing that you were successful. Uh, so they came here, let, they, they stopped in last year. Mm -hmm. It's almost a year later. Mm -hmm. What are they working with? Did you guys provide them with any numbers or? Well, they came and did and collected a, uh, uh, data from all different aspects of, uh, of our social life, education, um, health, social service, criminal justice, the, the, the hospitals, the morgues. Um, and so they took that data from 2009 to 2014 of 564 odd, uh, cases of individuals who either were victims of gun violence or committed gun violence themselves. Mm -hmm. And so that, that, that they got a collection. And we also provided them other information. We gave them the uh, kids count. We gave them the Hope Commission. We did the Bishop Morton's. Um, um, she also did a report from the youth. We provided them that. And um, we also gave them the Hope Commission's findings. Okay. So we gave them as much data as we could about what we have done in trying to determine the issues with violence. So they're working with a number of things. Tell me about recently a preliminary report mm -hmm. uh, was actually uh, something that was discussed in the city. Right, well, they, it was preliminary. We haven't received the official final written report yet um, of the findings. And what they um, found was just some, they were able to give us some stats of the data. Um, like of the 569, there was um, high suspension, maybe 85% uh, of them were absent from school or 50% were suspended, had high suspension and expulsion rates, 28% dropped out, 60% um, had residential issues, 73% were involved in the juvenile, delinqu uh, juvenile system, 90% um, were unemployed. Mm. and various other stats. 40% had, had been investigated for child abuse. Yeah. So there were centennial events or markers, I would say, that all of the, um, the individual cases that they had selected all hit those markers. Not shocking information, but when you just, I guess the, 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 the uh, thing about the unemployment rate, mm. something that the city is focused on, officials here that I've talked to, um, what do you have to say about that information? Well, that is an issue. I mean, w Wilmington is a um, finance, insurance, real estate, corporate um, um, headquarters. And if you have a felon, you can't work in those systems. You know, so the, the, these individuals who have those types of backgrounds leaves them out into the unemployment. Majority of the employment here in Wilmington are from outside of Wilmington. And the individuals who are working in Wilmington work outside of Wilmington. So we crisscross at 5 o'clock. So at night, we're financially poor. During the daytime, we, we have some individuals with, with uh, sustainable income, but they leave at 3 to 5 o'clock. So, and and they, they, those individuals who live here with the um, le lesser in income are the ones who carry the brunt of the taxes and, mm -hmm. and those type of things. So. Well, we have a number of things going on in the city, a number of initiatives, a number of resources. How important is this CDC study? I, I think it's vital because it means it's evidently they felt that there was something that we were doing or that is being done 
to the um, in, to the citizenry that is causing this epidemic. So what it is is taking a very intensive look at how we are delivering services and um, what type of environment we are creating. Government's responsibility, from my perspective, is that we create a, a sustainable environment for which to our citizens to live and thrive and play. So evidently, the environment that our community is is toxic right now, um, and there and it, it's compounded with the traumatic episodes that is causing our, our young people to respond in the way that they are. Is it our educational system? We know we have issues in our educational system. We know we have a high rate of, of teen homelessness. Um, we know we have a high rate of unemployment. Um, and from the statute and the support of social services, we also know that we have a lot of mental illness that, um, that is, is plaguing our community. So all this is coupled with yes. what we have. Okay. Well, hopefully uh, they'll be, be able to provide a real solution to the violence here. Switching gears, uh, I'm sure you heard about the South Carolina man, Walter Scott, uh, the incident in South Carolina. Uh, what about the body cameras here in Wilmington? Should Wilmington police be wearing them now? Well, my understanding is that that we do have uh, a pilot program about to be to be implemented. Um, it's either six to twelve cameras that we body cameras that the city is in possession of, and we're waiting for some legalities to vote to be smoothed out before it's put into place. And I, I urge them to to um, get that done as soon as possible because we, although we have not had any major issues like that, based on the the um, public safety task force report, mm -hmm. we do have some issues with our police department and our relationships with our citizens that one of those, something like that, you know, we pray never happens. But um, there is, there's some contention between the community and the police. And um, I know of events where there's been some uh, use of excessive force mm -hmm. um, to people that I know and love in my family or just in my community. And so we don't want to get to that point. So I think the body camera needs to get put into place as soon as possible. Okay, and just to clarify, Walter Scott was uh, an unarmed black man that yes. was shot by a police officer. Thank you so much for being here. It's always a pleasure talking to you. That's City Councilwoman Hanifa Shabazz. Uh, here on First, we're hoping to hear some useful information from the CDC soon on the violence here in the city of Wilmington.